In 2007, the economy was still growing at 5%. Lights had just started to go out. We didn't really know what load shedding was. There weren't these global pandemics. So state capture was yet to happen. You've been through more than 10 years of that now. And if the opposition doesn't hold together, uh, you're going to go through another decade of that. What will be the major risks facing South Africa in 2022? This was a question that we at the Center for Risk Analysis considered in a recent client webinar. What follows is a short extract from this webinar featuring incoming director of the CRA, John Endres, and outgoing director, Franz Cronier. Enjoy. John, I wanted to give you the opportunity to ask answer this question from Nicholas. Um, he says, please could you play out your scenarios for power generation in the country? And I think it'll take us to near the end, and then I'll ask you each for your, your view of uh, 2022 and, and, and your call on what you think some of the major risks are going to be. But uh, John, do you want to offer your insights into to power generation? Do you think that we could see much more systemic breakdown of the electricity supply grid in South Africa? Yes. Um, so I think outages are going to continue. I think equipment breakdowns are going to continue. Um, they're not going to come in at a lower level than where they are at the moment. But we might be blessed by having low economic growth. Um, and low economic growth means that there's not so much demand for power. Uh, anytime you see economic growth going up, you'll see load shedding increasing. Unfortunately, that's the kind of situation we're in. Um, if I think a bit further ahead, uh, you know, how will we expand our capacity? I think it is going to take a long time for ESCOM to do that. And I think the quick way to do that really is through private generation. And that is going to be through a mix of technologies and a mix of players in the market that ranges all the way from private households installing solar uh, or uh, installing energy saving devices in order to reduce their electricity bill through to mines installing their own power generating equipment, which they are now allowed to do um, since the, the limit has been raised, on, raised on, on private generation and ranging also to the independent power producers that are feeding into the national grid. And I think ultimately the way out of this uh, situation that we find ourselves in is for the private sector to be much more involved in power generation and being given the scope and the encouragement to do so by as common by the state. Um, you know, we need lots of companies feeding electricity into the grid and then being just uh, that electricity then being distributed all the way through the grid to the households, to the companies, to the businesses. That is the way out. I don't think that we're going to be rid of load shedding in the next three years, four years. I think it's still going to be with us for a while yet. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30 day free trial for more content from the CIA. Just ask uh, each of you, Franz and John, to give your kind of final refre reflections on where you think South Africa is heading in 2022. And uh, let's start with you, Franz. Uh, what is your, yeah. your call for the year ahead? Okay, no, no reforms coming out of the, the government. Um, energy crises remain. We inherit the lag effects of this uh, new variant and, and the, the knock-on for the tourism industry. So we start, we start on the back foot. Um, so you get very low growth, uh, you get rising unemployment, you get rising levels of, of protest action, um, and you simply accelerate, therefore, the political consequences of that that you saw in the election recently. The thing to watch is going to be this thing I stressed this evening of the ability of the opposition parties to work together. If that fractures and breaks up and, and you see them spending more time and energy on sinking each other than they do on, uh, as opposition parties on leading South Africa to reform. Then, then I think the medium to longer term futures, that's a three to 10 years, could become really rough for, for the country. Uh, you've been through a rough decade already. Uh, if you think back to more than that, uh, in, into 2007, the economy was still growing at 5%. Lights had just started to go out. We didn't really know what load shedding was. There weren't these global pandemics. So state capture was yet to happen. You've been through more than 10 years of that now. And if the opposition doesn't hold together, uh, you're going to go through another decade of that before we sort of reset and look at our political options. But if the opposition does hold together, uh, then I think there is a way out of trouble and uh, things can start looking up for the country, David. John, uh, 
could you uh, perhaps close us off? And uh, yeah, also, I think, you know, this is uh, a, a going to be a significant year, I think, um, both for the country and uh, also for you yourself as you take over uh, the reins from France, uh, leading the CRA. Uh, are there any kind of final thoughts that you would like to add uh, as we go into the new year? Yes, um, it is the idea, I think, that the CRA has established a reputation for hold, holding counter-cyclical views. Um, so when things are going well, we tend to say that there are, there's trouble on the horizon. And the other way around, that also holds. And I think we're in one of those situations right now. So looking ahead to 2022, 2023, 2024, I think we can say with a very high degree of certainty that uh, things are not going to get better during this period. Um, so economic growth, I think, will not materialize. Uh, energy security will not materialize. COVID is still going to continue messing us around a bit. Uh, the ANC and the EFF, especially the ANC, will push uh, to pursue its legislative agenda because it can also sense that there is the risk that time is running out now for it. So it will be easy to be gloomy in the next year, the next couple of years, but I think the 2024 prospect is a very enticing one. And it is one that uh, I would encourage the subscribers to keep their minds and their eyes focused on um, because that, that really could be a, a seismic change in South Africa. And that is where the prospect for improvement lies. So I think there's still a, a few years of fuss bait ahead of us. Um, it will seem like there is no prospect for improvement. Everything will seem very terrible, um, but there is the prospect 2024. It is not a certainty as France points out. Um, okay, that opportunity can still easily be, easily be lost if the coalitions don't hold together, for example, but that prospect is there and it is a good prospect. Um, one that doesn't come around that often, but if it materializes then uh, the second half of the 2020s could become a quite stellar um, and very hopeful period for South Africa if we manage to get back onto the growth track that we were as a country in the uh, early 2000s, um, creating jobs, uh, growing the economy, growing per capita incomes, then I think we really will be on, on a good path. And uh, yeah, I think as South Africans, we all hope that that will be the case. David. Yeah, John, and uh, we as the CRA will be there with our clients every step of the way to navigate them through some of these risks and the choppy waters. Uh, but France, I just wanted to also say thank you very much for uh, your enormous contribution to the CRA team, uh, your insight and your analysis and uh, uh, the way that you positioned the CRA, I think, uh, has, has really grown our profile and uh, made a significant impact on the South African market. And uh, we're looking forward to continuing uh, those traditions that you established of, of fearless insight and uh, the ability to to offer those those frank assessments of the risks in, in South Africa. So on behalf of the CRA team, I just wanted to thank you very much and sincerely for your efforts. No, thanks, David. That, that's the word. It was always a team. Um, most extraordinary people, they they all remain in place and hopefully you guys will still talk to me now and again. Um, so the, the, the sort of coalescing continues. And uh, yeah, I... I Look forward to getting on to some of these webinars and hearing what, what you guys have to say. So, yeah, thank you, David, and thanks to you, and thanks to John. Well, thank you, Franz. John, you wanted to say... Uh, thank you very much, Franz. Yes. Okay, uh, excellent. So, <laughs> yes, uh, we'll All right. continue with the uh, tradition of excellence which uh, Franz has created. Um, and, yeah, be counter-cyclical, be hard-hitting, be unsparing with the truth, um, and make sure that our analysis is as honest as it possibly can be, which is very honest. Thanks for joining us this year on the CRA channel. We're going to be taking a short break. But don't worry, we will be back on the 3rd of January. If you're celebrating Christmas, all the very best wishes for that. And we will see you again in the new year. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.